What a wonderful name, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. My greetings to everyone over there. Um, this is Pastor Sami. I greet you all brothers and sisters and anyone following us in this video. May God bless you richly and abundantly. Um, I'm coming to share with every one of you here one important subject concerning Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice. I would like to share this because it's because of the sacrifice of Jesus that Christianity exists. Without Jesus Christ, the crucified, there is no way that we can talk about Christianity. There is no way that we can talk about any church today. In fact, church and Christianity will make no sense without Jesus Christ, the crucified, the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. Without his work upon the cross as the perfect sacrifice, there is no way that we can even begin to speak about salvation, about church, about pastors, and all that. And then I want to say that because uh, the center of spiritual warfare is to cause human beings to fail to grasp and to believe and to accept the finished work of Christ upon the cross. It is to cause men to fail to see that upon the cross, the work that was done basically destroyed all the satanic system's power destroyed all the principalities power destroyed all the domination from the devil's power destroyed all the witchcraft power so the devil is working to make sure that you and me understand or misunderstand the work of the cross because it's upon the cross that the devil was made bankrupt it is upon the cross that the satanic system was made bankrupt, useless, destroyed, and made zero. It's upon the cross that all the demonic system basically lost. Now, the spiritual warfare for the devil today is basically to cause you just to undermine the work. Accept it, but undermine it. Don't believe it to be complete. And then today, the devil wants you to think, to believe that when you go through difficult time, you face problems that some may diagnose as being curses from your family, from your village, from your country, from wherever, that you who are not covered by the work that Jesus did by, upon the cross. That upon the cross, Jesus only covered your sins, so you may go in heaven, you may have salvation, but when you face any other curses and problems, including financial problems, matrimonial problems, divorce problems, miscarriage problems, any satanic attacks today, you need to do another sacrifice. That's what is it. That's why we see a lot of people selling oil. And a lot of people calling people to give donations so they may break the curse of poverty. The curse. So the devil has introduced a wrong message that sounds nice. You think that the people want you good, but actually what they are doing, what is doing is to cause you to undermine what Christ did upon the cross. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. His sacrifice upon the cross has been so deep, so powerful, that it takes away every kind of condemnation, every kind of curse, every kind of bad spells. It covers you 
from the past and into the future forever. So when you meet problems, difficult, you try to get pregnant and it doesn't work and you really think that it's a curse, I'm telling you, you don't need to do another sacrifice. Claim the power of the cross. Call upon the power of the cross. It covers you for that. Your business may not work. Your finance seem to collapse. And you think, you think, if you diagnose that, you think you are under curse. The blood of Christ covers you for that. Claim the cross. Call upon the cross. It's a finish to work for any problem you go through. But the devil wants you to think it's only for you to be saved, to go in heaven. But it's not enough for your salvation. That's a big lie. That's a lie. Let me say this. God being a good God, a father. If you are a father or a mother and you see your child is sick, having a headache problem, and then you are the best physician in the land, and you are the richest person in the land, and you are a physician, and you want to treat the headache from your son, and at the time you treat his headache, you see that his leg has a problem. There is a tumor. There is a cancer in there. And you are the best physician. Will you concentrate only to treat his head and leave his leg until he comes to give you another donation? Will you leave him and go away and tell him, go find another physician, give him money, let him do it? And you are the best who can do it? You are the best one? Will God do that? Come in this world, he saw a lot of people struggling, suffering, so many problems. And he came to die for the sins of the world. And he will only solve some problems and leave you to fight yourself and donate him money again when he is so rich. That's the wrong message, I'm telling you. Whenever you go through a problem, there is one thing you need to do. Claim the cross. Claim the cross. Remind your problem that at the cross, Jesus Christ defeated you. Remind the devil that at the cross, Jesus Christ defeated you. Remind your, any curse from your family that at the cross, God took away my condemnation. That God took away my curse. Remind your poverty, if it is a curse and you think it is a curse, speak to it. That at the cross, Jesus Christ took away all curses, including the one that may come from poverty, from finances. I know that the curses of poverty is made up by many just to manipulate people from giving money and using threat to cause people to give their money. That's very sad. But if you are one person who thinks that your financial work has been bewitched, has, is under witchcraft, and the devil is working against you in your business, and you feel that evil spirit are trying to foil and break your work, claim the power of the cross. It is complete. It is sufficient. And when God blesses you, you can donate, but not to get away from curse. You donate and give because of acknowledging the love of God upon the cross. Because of receiving the love of God upon the cross. Our giving is basically an act of response. As we understand the free deliverance, the free gift that God did to us upon the cross of Jesus. So let me read uh, a verse in John 15 verse 5. It's Jesus talking here. Let me read it here. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. A, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus saying this. Use the analogy of a, a vine and a branch. The branch can only stay healthy when it's connected. If you disconnect it from the main branch, it's fundamentally it's dead. So Jesus Christ is telling us here that 
He is the connection that you have for your security. He is the connection that you have for your well-being. He is the connection that you have for your blessing. He is your connection that you have to break all family curses, whether it is true or fake. You break it in Jesus' name anyway. Jesus is the one connection that you use to destroy all demonic judgment, whether it's true or whether it's fake, because there are some fake judgment. So that's what he's telling us here, that apart from me, you can do nothing. So in presenting Jesus as the perfect sacrifice, we want to present to you here that he is the only way, the only I'm going to read again uh, in uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. It speaks a lot about the sacrifice and the perfect sacrifice. I'm going to read some verses and I would encourage you to read the whole book of Hebrews. If you are a new believer, do it. If you are an old believer, redo it again. And then you will be blessed by what you read. And if you can, read the whole chapter 10 and it will be a blessing. But let me read a couple of verses in chapter 10. Hebrew 10, I'm going to read verse 1 first, and then we will talk. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things. So the law, a shadow of the good things to come, but it was not the actual thing. The promise is in the law. The way the law operates, the way things are done according to the law, they were not the right way that things had to be done. They were just an image. So a lot of people use a lot of verses in the law and then misuse it and reuse it in the way it was in the law. They fail because the completion is in Christ as the perfect sacrifice upon the cross. So God used the law to prepare us, to prepare everybody until the coming of Christ, the perfect sacrifice, so that we all concentrate upon the finished work of Christ upon the cross as the perfect sacrifice. So all the curses that God spoke about to the Jews in the Old Testament, especially let me talk about the cross, the, the curses, uh, those who he said about the Jew in Deuteronomy 28, where people say the curses of poverty, those are not the right way that things were supposed to be. They were just an image. And all the curses that may spoken to them in Malachi chapter 3, 1 verse to 10, that people are cursed with a curse of a curse, all those were just the image of things to come. They are not really the main message that he tried to get them to. So that's what the verse means here. The law was only a shadow. So don't live in a shadow. And, and then it he goes here, say, and can never with there's the same sacrifice, which they offered continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. So in the law, people used to give a sacrifice. And those sacrifices were, were not making them perfect. So I read verse 1. So let's jump to another verse. And then uh, we will uh, continue with our discussion. By that will, we have been sanctified. That verse 10. Through the offering of the blood or the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is talking about Jesus Christ and comparing his sacrifice with the animal sacrifice. Which had to be done over and over. And say by that will. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once from, for all. Sanctified here means what? Purified. By the sacrifice of Jesus once for, for all. Sanctified here means that if you were under curse, the curse are destroyed. Any curse that you may think. Whether the present or future curses that demons may do, that witches may do, that anybody may make up to stick upon you. 
even financial curses, even business curses, even matrimonial and miscarriage curses, even sickness curses, all of those are covered through the blood of Jesus Christ. So when he says sanctified, means that you have been purified, delivered for any type of witchcraft, demonic power, present and future. Past and present and future. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. So it means that it covers every aspect of your life in the past, in the present and in the future. So that which makes Jesus Christ the perfect sacrifice, his sacrifice is done once, only once. So that verse 10, and then we go to 11. He's talking about the priest. And every priest stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. So the priests in the Old Testament, they would offer sacrifice for themselves, for the people, but it never took away sins, which means it never took away curses. Curses stay. They get weak a little bit and they, they, they become stronger again. It cannot take away judgment. It cannot take away bad spell, evil spell. It cannot take away condemnation from demonic spirit. It only makes a very temporary work. So that's what it says here, that the sacrifices that the priest made were not complete. It didn't work. It was only to prepare us to Jesus. So that's what it says. So we go to verse 14. For by one offering, Jesus Christ, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. By one offering, one, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified the sacrifice of jesus was one but it makes everyone who believes in it perfect forever so it breaks all the power of the devil in your life forever jesus christ is the perfect sacrifice let me read again verse 17 and 18 then he adds their sins and their lawlessness did I will remember no more. This is God talking. That because of the sacrifice of Jesus, your sins, your iniquities, and your curses, and the bad spells of any of your family line, they all collapse. God doesn't want to do anything with it. He removes it. He cancels everything. He cancels everything the devil has done. He cancels it. So that's what it is. You, you, you remember Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. Your grandpa maybe, uh, he lived maybe 200 years from now. It still covers anyone. The Bible says for the promise is for you, for your children. And from, for everyone who believes, as many as are the Lord God will call. So the work, the finished work of Christ is complete work. So I want to say here that uh, uh, the spiritual warfare from the devil is basically uh, uh, concentrating upon making us, you and me, believers, new and old, to doubt what God has done to undermine. Doubting may be hidden, but making you think that work he did upon the cross is only a religious act that cannot treat or handle all the problems that you face in your life. You don't need to give any gift today for your problems. You don't need to give any sacrifice today to take away your problems. What you need to do, if you have to give, you give because of the thanksgiving, for what God has given to you freely through the cross. We donate, we give, we sacrifice our time, our money, our belongings, not to seek for deliverance, not to take away the curse, but to respond to the love of God that he has shown to us freely upon the cross. By to say thank you to God for giving us such a powerful weapon 
which is the cross of Jesus. So that we can stand upon that to defeat all the demonic power that may come in whichever way, at whichever time, to do whichever work. So that's the work of the cross. The cross of Jesus is perfect. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. That's what we want to share with you today. And we hope that you get it. John the Baptist said in John chapter 1 verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The sins of the world means this, the Lamb of God that takes away all the curse of the world. The Lamb of God that takes away the condemnation of the world. The Lamb of God that takes away the bad spell from your family. The Lamb of God that takes away demonic power that may act upon you against you for anything you may think about, including any curse that you may imagine even if it doesn't exist. The Lamb of God will handle any problem that may cause you to fear about the future. The, the cross of Jesus is enough and you should be in peace. The, the cross of Jesus is complete and this work cannot be improved because it's so wonderful, it's so deep, it's so great. So I want to remind you to wake up, wake up and stand your ground by confirming, by proclaiming the cross of Jesus. Uh, so in verse 18, he say, Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Let me repeat from 17. Then he adds, There is sins, and there is and he adds, their sins and the lawlessness, these I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. So when Jesus Christ died, because his sacrifice is so perfect, the Bible says there is no more need for any offering for sins. You know, Sin is the source of all the curses. Curses cannot work unless there is a sin. Demons cannot work unless they rely upon sin. The devil cannot operate and do any work that will succeed against you unless there is sin in the first place. So the devil gets his power and authority from the working power of sin. So bad spell, demonic reclamation, any curses that may operate against anything, any of your family, anything you may think about, can only work when there is a sin. So God through Jesus Christ has given us a powerful tool that handles everything that may come from sin. So the finished work of Christ is so complete that it handles all the curses. And because of that, there is no need for you and me to give any sacrifice anymore for any curse. In fact, sacrifices were not for curses anyway. It were for sins because curses are supported by sin. Giving sacrifice for curses is just a manipulation that people are making. So the sacrifices are given so to take away the guilt caused by sin, which then would produce and make you to be vulnerable from curses. So for you to be attacked and reached and destroyed by curses, sins have to come first. So the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, came to take away the sins of the world, not only of one family, not only for two people, not only for one country, for the whole world. He came to take the 
all sort of curses that may, we may name in the whole world. From all the families, villages, all of it. That's what Jesus came to do upon the cross. So the satanic system, the devil in the spiritual warfare is working to cause people think that the work of Christ is incomplete. Wake up. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. So that's what I want to share today. You know, we cannot be Christian without believing in Jesus Christ as the perfect and complete sacrifice. That his work is so complete that we cannot improve it anymore. May God bless you as you listen to this. Meditate that again. God is wonderful. God is great. He has given us a great gift. He has done a great thing for us. He's done something wonderful for us. We didn't ask him to come as a human being to die upon the cross. He did it in his own. He could have chosen to let us perish. Because if he would let us perish, he would still be right. He is God. He would continue to be God. No one will bring him to court if he would have done that. But he chose freely by his own will to come and save us through the blood of the man, Jesus Christ. And now the devil is working to undermine his work, to cause you to undermine the benefit of the cross. And to cause you to think that you can work it by yourself. You cannot. If you read Proverbs 15 to verse 8, Proverbs 21 and 27 and many other verses, you will see that God does not accept the sacrifice of a wicked, which means somebody who is under a curse. If you are under a curse, that means you are a wicked. God cannot accept your sacrifice. So I'm talking to anybody here. We are believe you believe in Christ. Let's believe in him completely. Believe in the complete work, the finished work of Christ upon the cross. That there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. There is no condemnation. That means there is no curse that works against those who are in Christ. There is no bad spell for which you need to give any sacrifice anymore because you are in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. The cross of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus is perfect. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. His work is a finished product. Blessing. So what you and me do, we have to understand His work upon the cross, meditate it, and increase our love for what he has done. And the more we do that, the spiritual man in you and me will increase. And the more the spiritual man get powerful, the more we manifest the victory of Christ, the one he has given to us through the cross. We have no donation to give anymore for our, to take away our curses. But we have donation of thanksgiving to thank God to acknowledge the work he has done. We have gift that we give, offering that we do, not as a means to take away the curses, but as a means to manifest our acceptance, our acknowledgement, and our thanksgiving for what God has done to us freely. We do so so we can support the work of proclaiming Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice. We do so as to respond to his love, not to seek his love. He loved us already too much, way much more than we think, way much more than we can imagine. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There is nothing you can do for God to love you more. He has done it already. His love is already so big. You and me, we still have to dig into his love, to understand his love. And when we discover and dig into his love, we get drunk by his love. 
we get foolish by his love. We start to do things motivated by his love. God is great. God is wonderful. May God bless you, everyone. I want you, as you listen here, to remember the work of Jesus. The work that he has done is a finished product. I gave an example of someone who may be a physician. And then, will he, will you, as a father, a physician, treat your son, your daughter, just for a headache and let the other sickness undone when you are the best person to do it? You cannot do it. If you do it, then you are not a real father. You are a witch if you do it. I can give you another example on how to do the spiritual warfare. Let's suppose that you go to court and then you are fined by the judge. Uh, so just before we finish, uh, we want to say this. Uh, so um, when um, to give an example on the spiritual warfare, and then to so you can see why the devil is actually working hard so that he will confuse your faith in Jesus Christ as a perfect sacrifice. Uh, let us assume for this sake that you have a fine, you go to court and they tell you that you, you have been fined, you have to pay a fine of a hundred million dollars before they can set you free. And then uh, as you are in the court, you find that you cannot pay for it. And in the meantime, as you are there, one of your friends comes and pay, pay for you, so you may be set free. I think the court basically doesn't mind whether you are the one who pays or if anybody else is paid. All courts work like that. God works like that as well. In the court of God, he just wanted to be paid and Jesus Christ paid it. So in that process, when your friend pays uh, for your fine, you will get a receipt and then you set free because somebody paid for you. And then you fulfill the requirement from the court. You are a free person. And as you live your free life, uh, in the middle of your life, you one day you come across a policeman who comes to you and tell you to pay fine for uh, the same crime again. That you owe a hundred million thousand dollars uh, to the court. So what you will do, I don't. You will not go and pay it right away. You will take the receipt and show him that your fine had been paid. Now, if you meet him the second time, you will still and asking him to pay. You will take your receipt and show him the court decision that it has been paid. And if you. He, 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 he wants you to pay, you can take him to court, and then the court, you will show your papers that your fine has been paid. Because if you go to the court and try to pay for the same fine again, the court will not even allow you. The true court will tell you your fine, your problem has been solved. You don't have to pay for it again. So, if the policeman keeps on asking you to pay and refuse to accept the judgment from the court, then you will think that you are not dealing with a real policeman, you are de dealing with a crook who want to smuggle your money. So in spiritual warfare, this is how it works. The devil is a crook. And then he hires some crooks to do the work for him. So they may keep asking you to do and to pay for your curses so you can maintain the guilt into your heart. You never feel free. You never feel loved completely because you have to pay constantly to get away your curses. So when something like happens, especially in spiritual warfare, you don't attack the devil by donating again, by giving sacrifice again. You do the same. You keep showing him that your fines have been paid, 
that your sins have been taken upon the cross, that your curse have been taken upon the cross, that Jesus Christ removed your curse and destroyed it upon the cross, that God remembers your sin as any more, that upon the cross God cancelled all the bad spells, all the evil and demonic curses, that God took away all condemnation, all curses that you may think about, He took it away upon the cross. So you keep on showing to the devil and to his systems that your fines have been paid, that your curse have been taken care of by the cross, that the cross covers all your problems. You don't keep giving, 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 giving sacrifices. If that's how you work, you are under manipulation. But you keep on doing actions and works of a thanksgiving. So in spiritual warfare, we keep on showing to the devil the cross. Because it is the cross that defeated his work. It is the cross that crushed the satanic system. It is upon the cross that the work of the devil was completely abolished, finished, and made zero by Jesus Christ. So we keep on displaying it. We keep on meditating the work of God upon the cross. And as we do that, the love of God will increase in us. The spiritual man will grow up stronger and stronger. Powerful and more powerful until the rapture day. May God bless you. If you open to be one in such a case and you have problems that you worry about, which may look like curses, please call upon the cross and remind your problem that upon the cross everything was done. Jesus Christ said upon the cross, it is finished. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We bless you for everyone who followed us in this hour and this moment. Blessed be your name. We bless you, Jehovah. We praise you, Heavenly Father, because of the work that you have done for each and every one of us upon the cross. I pray that you help everybody who heard us present Jesus Christ as the perfect sacrifice today. That you may help anyone who needs a breakthrough to concentrate upon the cross. That the power of the cross that came out to crush the devil, to crush all demonic domination, demonic bad spell, which came to crush all sorts of demonic curses, any curse that follow my brother, my sister, and the person listening in this hour. Let the power of the cross be active in his life to respond against any demonic attacks, to respond against any bad spells and witchcraft, any curses that may be from the family line, that it may be crushed, destroyed by the power of the cross. Let my brother, my sister, the friend who is listening, learning to lift up, to uphold the work of the cross, learn to fight the devil by lifting up, by affirming, by declaring, confirming and claiming the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. I commit each and every one of those who have heard in this hour into your hands. Let the power of Jesus Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the goodness of God the Father accompany each and every one of those who heard this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.